uh, Congressman. And let's talk about that because I think one of the real problems that we have today uh, has to do with our infrastructure. And, uh, and on many occasions, we've had an opportunity to hear you say something about transportation in mm -hmm. this country and some of the problems associated with transportation and some of your visions in terms of what can be possible in terms of trying to alleviate some of the congestion and some of the other problems that we have. Let's talk about uh, uh, transportation in Nashville and the uh, uh, airport situation uh, okay. for the next few minutes. Well, we've got to rebuild America. We've got to rebuild our infrastructure, which uh, brings about uh, new jobs, new opportunities for us all. And I'm on the Transportation Committee in Washington, D.C., due to my uh, membership in the United States uh, House of Representatives and I'm a very active member and we've got the highway bill uh, pending now which is a multi-billion dollar bill and uh, naturally I wanted to ca take care of Nashville and Middle Tennessee as part of it so we have uh, 3.7 million dollars in there for an intermodal or land port we might call it or a mass transit uh, transportation center for the development of it, we expect, uh, MTA and myself expect it'll cost about $33.4 million when it's totally completed. But it'll be a transportation center downtown, that'll be part of it, uh, which will give us an opportunity to, uh, for van pools, car pools, uh, bus uh, service, shuttle service, uh, transportation to the airport, uh, a mass transit system in terms of light rail, uh, hopefully Amtrak service, and, but we got to look and prepare now for the future uh, because the future is, uh, is such a short period of time. But if we don't plan and, and dream, uh, nothing will happen. And uh, that's why I wanted to incorporate it into the highway bill. And we've been fortunate uh, that our proposals have been incorporated in the highway bill and it, we expect to vote on it in Washington, D.C. Uh, in September, and it will benefit Nashville and Middle Tennessee. Now, you also mentioned Amtrak as part of this whole operation. Why don't you give us some information as to how you see Amtrak and some of the problems that you see in terms of trying to bring that through Nashville? Well, you know, I'm a native Nashvilleian. Most uh, people live in Nashville now are not native Nashvilleians. They've uh, come here from other places, which is great, which has offered a new dimension uh, for Nashville. I think I'm the endangered species these days because most people, such as yourself, who've come from Arkansas, but Nashville is your home just like it's my home and we all want to build a, a greater Nashville area. Mm -hmm. And I remember train service uh, and passenger service in Nashville. Matter of fact, I've ridden on a train from Nashville to LA and back mm -hmm. as a boy, but that's non-existent now. Well, I'm trying to bring it back and uh, we've got uh, some uh, movement in that direction now. Hopefully we can tie it in with the Olympics of 1996 that'll be held in Atlanta, Georgia. And hopefully by that date, uh, we'll have Amtrak uh, service again in Nashville, which would run uh, from Chicago to Jacksonville and on to Miami, uh, which would go through Springfield, Tennessee, Nashville, uh, Murfreesboro, Chattanooga, uh, the last time uh, we had Amtrak service, it went through Birmingham, which I'm not sure was the best route. We think this could be a v most profitable route for Amtrak service because they're more and more moving toward being in the black by the year 2000. And uh, that's what we'd like to s see happen uh, for the sake of all concern. But you have to realize also that no country in the world has been totally in the black when it comes to uh, offering uh, uh, passenger service because uh, uh, it just hadn't worked that way because of, of how it's structured. But, but uh, you see what other countries have done with uh, passenger rail service and we want to do it uh, for the greater Nashville area and uh, I think it'll work. And uh, we've organized people all along the route, uh, all the way from Chicago and Evansville uh, to Nashville on to Georgia and Florida and uh, we're very organized and hopefully we'll be able to uh, bring about uh, fruition and uh, 
reestablish Amtrak uh, passenger, railroad passenger service for Nashville. Very good. Another area of transportation that you're also involved in as a uh, member of the subcommittee, I think, on aviation in Congress has to do with the Nashville International Airport. Uh, why don't you talk about that for a few minutes? In well, I'm, on the, to I'm on the aviation committee. And, uh, you know, we got a first class airport. And matter of fact, I'm working on some uh, international direct service for Nashville at present uh, for Europe, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be London or France or other locations, as well as Central and South America. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that very well can happen. We could announce some uh, additional international air service as early as 1992 next year. Uh, mm -hmm. I was able to get through some legislation uh, in, uh, in Washington through the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate that was sent to the President. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, the President pra praised me, and which I appreciate very much, on noise abatement mm -hmm. uh, because we wanted to solve many of our noise problems uh, here in the greater Nashville area, and we wanted to do it now. But we had no assurances that uh, we could solve the problems now if we spent local money. And so my bill, uh, stated uh, clearly that uh, what we wanted to do was to spend local funds with the guarantee mm -hmm. out of the uh, airport trust fund where they have billions of dollars restricted for aviation that we could be reimbursed our local community our local taxpayer could be reimbursed out of the airport trust fund in Washington DC for monies that we could spend now in order to correct the noise problems in Nashville in and around the airport rather than waiting 10, 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And that bill became law and President Bush invited myself to the White House for the signing ceremony and gave me the pen. Very good. Uh, Congressman, one of the things that uh, we are all concerned with uh, to sort of change directions here a minute uh, has to do with family values and uh, the problems of drugs and substance abuse in uh, this country. I don't think I have to tell you anything about uh, b b how important that is. But let's talk about some of the, uh, some of your ideas in reference to family values and the problems of uh, substance abuse and the drug problem in America, because I know you've worked quite hard on that. Dr. Haney, it's been devastating to our society, uh, the plight of drugs, uh, the consuming of drugs, and, and what it's done to the family unit. We've had a total breakdown. And it's going to take all of us putting the family back together again. And I don't think we're going to solve uh, the drug problem until the family unit becomes back to gets back together again. And, and I think a government has a responsibility there in terms of any legislation that's pending, that's enacted in the law, that we don't divide the family. We need to take that into consideration before the passage of any uh, legislation in Washington, D.C. or at the state and local uh, level. How can we bring the family back together again? Mm -hmm. There's so many families uh, where the children are coming up in single parent homes. That's mm -hmm. tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough uh, for the mothers uh, and not having that father in the home. And that's what mostly happens. I'm not saying it happens each every time because mm -hmm. it does not. Mm -hmm and because we see examples uh, where the, the woman leaves. But most times the man is not there to provide guidance, uh, to offer uh, discipline, mm -hmm. to offer and provide support. Uh, and and it's, uh, it, it drives people into poverty too when you just have that single mm -hmm. check mm -hmm. where if you could get that family back together again mm -hmm. and you have that second or third mm -hmm. uh, paycheck, it, mm -hmm makes a lot of difference when, when it relates to so many children that are driven into poverty, not because they ask for it, because of the difficulties at the home. Mm -hmm. And uh, people have resorted to uh, drugs because of s low self-esteem, low self-worth. But I'd like to see us uh, provide some preventive uh, plans and programs. And the easiest and the best way is through education. Mm -hmm. uh, education will help us immensely. Uh, to, he to help uh, resolve the difficulties uh, in the home. Because if people have self-esteem and self-worth, not just education, but I'd like to think of some uh, religious values too. Religion does much uh, uh, to, to help people uh, believe in something other than themselves, a, a higher power. 
but it's up to each and every person to be accountable uh, for their own actions and everyone has to be accountable for their own actions and, and think about the consequences of, of the things that they do in their life and how it impacts others. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we've all got to help one another, no matter what our background is or where we were born. Uh, we've got to have more focus than we've got today. Very good. Uh, let's talk about uh, politics, uh, uh, Congressman. Uh, first, of all, let's, first of all, let's talk about uh, some of the national problems that we have in terms of our economy. Uh, more specifically, uh, our uh, national policy on energy, uh, having served as a director of the Tennessee Valley Authority, you're very familiar with some of the energy problems that we have, and we feel that uh, you ought to have something of some consequence to say in reference to that. So let's talk about that, and to again talk about the national economy in terms of the allocation of resources. I think that you've made a number of criticisms in reference to the S and L bailout, and so we'd certainly like to talk about that. And finally, if we could uh, say something about uh, perhaps the uh, presidential election mm -hmm. of 1992, uh, and mm -hmm. I think that that will sort of pull uh, us together here. Well, one was on energy you mentioned. We're 52 percent dependent on foreign oil. If nothing's done between now and the year 2000, we'll be 60 percent dependent on foreign oil. And that's why we've got to have a national energy policy. Uh, President Reagan uh, never did it. President Bush has never done it. Uh, President Carter came closer to establishing a national energy policy than anyone in the last uh, 10 to 15 years. And uh, that's what we need, and that's what I'm hoping that will happen in the 102nd Congress, whether it be this year or next year. Uh, we need nuclear, we need coal, we need hydro, we need oil, we need solar, we need uh, more emphasis on uh, on alternate energy sources as well as a renewed emphasis on conservation. All of that must encompass a national energy policy in order for us to be diversified. If we're diversified, we can be uh, energy independent and not dependent on foreign oil or the Middle East or any other place in the world. Now, number two is the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not so sure I believe at all uh, the statistics coming out of the Bush administration when it comes to the unemployed and underemployed. A lot of people have just dropped out of, of even trying to find a job because they don't feel like those jobs are there. Well, we've had some real softness in the economy right here in Nashville, and we're more sheltered than many economies uh, that are not as diversified as Nashville. And it's time for President Bush to spend time on domestic economic issues, mm -hmm. to putting people back to work rather than all of his time, practically all of his time, on foreign policy mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what people want. I've had call your congressman recently over and over and over again. I have uh, our people here at home say, President Bush is not taking care of America. We need to rebuild America. We need to be more concerned about our people at home mm -hmm. rather than always being concerned about uh, foreign policy. And I think the people are right here in Nashville, and I think the people are right in America concerning President Bush's priorities or lack of priorities. Now on the presidential race, what are the Democrats going to do? Mm -hmm. I think that's a good question. Uh, I think it's uh, disappointing that uh, pre uh, Senator Gore uh, did not uh, seek the presidency. I think this was a real opportunity for him uh, in 91, 92 to seek the presidency, but I understand uh, his uh, son had a uh, serious accident uh, and almost lost his life, and he wants to give some priorities uh, to his family. But I think uh, he had a real opportunity uh, to uh, do very well in 1992. I think any Democrat, mm -hmm. if they want to do well, whether it's Governor Bill Clinton, who I mm -hmm. think so much of in Arkansas, or, or uh, some of the other uh, Democrats, uh, I think their theme must be economics, bread and butter issues. And if they'll uh, tackle the bread and, busher, bu uh, bread and butter issues, mm -hmm. uh, I think they could do very well in 1992. So it, <coughs> you, you